Metro Detroit golfers, Ben and Chad here from the Golf Leadership Academy. And what we want to talk to you about today is one of the most underutilized, undercoached skills in all of golf, and we believe that is green reading. So Ben, when people come here and they want help with their golf game, as far as green reading goes, how do you help them out? Yeah, there's a lot of different things that we cover when it comes to green reading because there's multiple factors that influence break. The first thing that we'll typically talk about is side tilt and learning how to feel it with your feet and not read it with your eyes. What? Why is that no important? Eyes. Yeah, no eyes, no eyes. Way too many optical illusions built in on putting greens. Golf course architects are not very nice. They actually want you to miss putt. Yeah, so the golf course architects are really, you know, trying to play tricks on you and they're not really helping you out, yeah? That is true. All right, so what we're talking about is using our feet and we, do, we use aim point to do that. A lot of you maybe see uh, the players on TV, they're going up and they're standing on their line and they start to do this. So Ben, talk to us about side tilt and how the folks at home can go about starting to experience what you're talking about. Yeah, one of the things that you can start doing immediately, you don't need to use the whole system in order to become a better green reader. One of the things that we always talk about with aim point green reading is the middle third of your putt is gonna influence the break amount more than anything. The so middle third. The middle third, yep. So when so you're actually- So chunk it up. Yeah, so when you're reading a putt, a wise thing to do would be walk, uh, to walk a third of the way into the putt and then two thirds of the way into the putt and start to just feel whether or not you're tilted leftward or rightward. So you don't need your eyes to do that. You're just letting gravity pull you one direction or the other. And when you're feeling side tilt, you might feel it in your knees, your hips, your feet. People feel it all over the place, but you will feel gravity pull you one direction or the other. All right, so would it be fair to say if you feel more side tilt, if you're you're on a, a severe slope that the ball's gonna break way, way more. more yeah. And then if you feel a little bit, or perhaps it doesn't feel like there's anything there, then the ball would be relatively straight. Is that, that true? That is true, that is true. Very good, very good. Some other things that are gonna also influence that too, when you're feeling the side tilt, is the length of the putt is gonna influence how much a ball breaks. The longer the putt, the more it breaks. The shorter the putt, the less it breaks. Chad, what might be a couple of other things that'll uh, influence break amount? Yeah, so, so step one is how much side tilt do we feel? Yep. Then step two would be considering the length of the putt. Uh, the next thing that influences the speed. So if, if let's say we go to Oakland Hills or somewhere with very, very fast greens, faster greens will break more than slower greens. So the speed of the green will influence how much or how little the ball breaks. That is true. Why is that true? What, what's up with that? It's uh, kind of an interesting thing when you think about it. Uh, the reason that the ball breaks more on faster greens versus slower greens is due to the amount of time it's rolling. On faster greens, the ball is actually rolling slower than on slower greens. Because if you think about it, you're not hitting the ball nearly as hard. So if you're playing at Oakland Hills, you're just tapping that golf ball. And then it's rolling very, very slowly and it takes a long time to get to the hole. So therefore it has more time to take break. It's the same thing with uphill and downhill. On a downhill putt, it actually takes a longer time to get to the hole than the uphill putt. So therefore it's gonna break a little bit more. So downhill putts break more than uphill putts. You got it. Very good. So we have the size of the, or the, the, the length of the putt, if you yeah. will, yeah. Uh, the speed of the greens, and then uphill, downhill. You got it. Is there anything else that you can consider? Uh, you could consider grain. We don't really get that much grain in the state of Michigan, so you don't really need to worry about it here. But if you're playing down in Florida, you might experience some Bermuda grass, and that grain is actually going to pull it one direction or the other. So that would be the other thing that uh, might influence break amounts, along with wind, believe it or not. Yeah. yeah. So this Tuesday, what we encourage you to do is start using your feet to feel how much or how little side tilt is present. And that'll give you a very, very good idea of how much or how little that ball's gonna curve. Yeah. On top of that, consider the other variables of the speed or the, the, the length of the putt to, to add more or, little break, or less break, yeah? Yeah, you got it. And then for those of you who are interested in learning the entire aim point system, we actually have a unique opportunity coming up on Saturday, August 12th at Riverview Highlands. So uh, we have two clinics that are gonna be available. One goes from eight to 9.30, the other one is 10 to 11.30. So if there's anybody out there that's interested in attending the clinic, we'd love to have you. Please email us at info at golfleadershipacademy.com if you're interested in signing up. All right, that's Tuesday tip. Use your feet to feel uh, how much side tilt is present. If you wanna take the next step, come see us for the Aimpoint uh, Express Clinic. We hope this helps you. Uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.